there was no enormous release that, oh, I'm doing a movie, because I was hardly doing a, a Red River, right? Uh, you know, uh, the biggest difference, and it's a, it took me a lot of movies, five, six, maybe seven movies before I un really understood it. The biggest difference was the difference in scale. You have to tell a story differently on a 17-inch piece of glass as opposed to a 40-foot image. Uh, they say very different things to an audience with different speed. It becomes much clearer sooner when it's bigger. And you have to adjust your storytelling, storytelling for that. And it is a tremendously difficult adjustment to make because you're used to one kind of dramatic emphasis and you suddenly have to retool completely. Having said that, there are certain things that are, enorm that are an enormous help. Having come from TV to movies, uh, the laws of optics are constant. The 35 millimeter lens does the same thing on this camera as a, on a still camera, as on a movie camera, as on a television camera. There's 35 millimeters of distance between where the light crisscrosses and whatever the recording surface is, whether it's film or an image orthicon tube or what have you. And uh, the, my knowledge of lenses, which is encyclopedic, comes from my live television training. When I was telling you earlier about as an AD, I would be lining up the shot, the upcoming shot, with the two cameras that were off the air. Uh, in those days, each camera had a turret of four lenses, and the turret was turned, it was flipped mechanically, uh, so that you could have 12 lenses, use 12 different lenses on a show. Very often the queuing was coming so rapidly that you didn't have time to check, hey, are you on a 75 or a 50? Within a very short time, you had to be able to tell by eye what lens he was on, whether he was on the right lens. And that was just of extraordinary uh, value to me once I began doing movies.